Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And as has become habit, we will appease our YouTube overlords and their demonetization algorithm by first reading to you a brief snippet from Peter Straub's The Throat. Remember, I have permission from the author himself to read excerpts from this book. We started out in chapter one, we might as well continue. At this rate, we'll get through the book in, you know, eight years, nine years, something like that. Here we go. <clears throat> About a year after I straightened out, I came back to America and wound up writing a couple of books with a novelist named Peter Straub. Interesting. These were called Coco and Mystery, and maybe you read them. It's okay if you didn't. Peter's a nice enough kind of guy, and he lives in a big gray Victorian house in Connecticut. I don't think that's true. Just off Long Island Sound. He has a wife and two kids, and he doesn't get out much. Peter's office on the third floor of his house was the size of my whole loft on Grand Street, and his air conditioning and his sound system always worked. Peter liked listening to my descriptions of Millhaven. He was fascinated with the place. He understood exactly how I felt about it. In Millhaven, snow falls in the middle of summer, I'd say. Sometimes in Millhaven, flights of angels blot out the whole sky, and he'd beam at me for about a minute and a half. Here are some other things I told him about Millhaven. Once, on the near south side of town, a band of children killed a stranger, dismembered him, and buried the pieces of his body beneath a juniper tree. And later, uh, the divided and buried parts of the body began to call out to each other. Once, a rich old man raped his daughter and kept her imprisoned in a room where she raved and drank, raved and drank, without ever remembering what had happened to her. Once, the pieces of the murdered man, buried beneath the juniper tree, called out and caused the children to bring them together. Once, a dead man was wrongly accused of terrible crimes. And once, when the parts of the dismembered man were brought together at the foot of the tree, the whole man rose and spoke, alive again, restored. For we were writing about a mistake committed by the Millhaven police and endorsed by everyone else in town. The more I learned, the worse it got. Along with everyone else, I had assumed that William Damrosh had finally killed himself to stop himself from murdering people, or had committed suicide out of guilt and terror over the murders he had already done. Damrosh had left a note with the words, Blue Rose, on the desk in front of him. But this was an error of interpretation, of imagination. What most of us call intelligence is really imagination, sympathetic imagination. The Millhaven police were wrong and I was wrong. For obvious reasons, the police wanted to put the case to rest. I wanted to put it to rest for reasons of my own. Quite interesting. I'm glad that you guys were enjoying uh, the readings from Peter Straub or have, had, have enjoyed the first reading I did from Peter Straub's The Throat. He was quite tickled by the whole thing and I'd like to continue doing that if you guys don't mind. But gang, we have so much to talk about on this week's Sunday Stuff and Things. A lot of business, a lot of uh, sort of administrative things to get out of the way. First of all, we should be mentioning that out of a Castello Sea Rock bent or partially bent billiard, let me relight it. I am partaking of a little bit of Germain's Royal Jersey colon Perique mixture. This is something that was gifted to me by a very generous viewer. Oh man, I've got just some stuff all over here, some ashes and things, stuff and ashes and stuff. Um, and I am finally getting around to doing a first impressions video. I just recorded the first impressions video today. This one was really weird to me. I didn't taste anything for about a quarter of a bowl, which is odd. I just tasted burning and smoke and uh, not really any flavor, not any Virginia flavor, not any Perique flavor. But then as I went through the bowl, some flavors started coming out to me and my opinion of this blend, at least, you know, my first bowl, I'm still about eh, maybe two thirds through my very first bowl of Germain's Royal Jersey Perique mixture. Um, I'm intrigued now and I think that this might be something that I end up enjoying quite a bit. I haven't reviewed very many Germain blends on the channel because first of all, they're hard to get. At least in the US, they aren't distributed very often. Um, and when they are, they sell out almost immediately. Germain also makes the Esoterica blends, and so they have very limited production capacity. I know some people accuse them of artificially keeping the supply down to drive the demand up. But again, I always tell those people, if they were going to do that, they would charge way more for their blends, and they don't. They charge the same amount as pretty much everyone else does for a similar amount 
uh, in a tin or in a bag, whatever it may be. So I don't think they're trying to gouge people. I think they just do have very limited capacity and they can't keep up with demand. But I'm impressed with this so far. I'm curious to see how I'm gonna feel after a week. But stay tuned for the first impressions video, which we'll post this Wednesday, and then the review will post the following Wednesday. And I'm really glad to have a chance to try this out because it's really hard to get these germane blends. Other business. So we talked about in the past, the whole YouTube algorithm thing, demonetization, and I've been trying little experiments to see if I can still provide the same content, the same T-centric content without getting struck by the YouTube demonet demonetization algorithm. I knew that some of you would be annoyed by this whole thing. Um, it's kind of funny to me because I don't really understand why people can get so up in arms about free content that someone provides to them. But most of you have been super supportive and super in on the joke too. It's funny to say that it, it's fun to try to get something over on the YouTube algorithm, that strange amorphous blob in the sky that sifts through content and decides what is okay and what is not okay. I'd like to still keep making a little bit of money off this YouTube channel and I'd like to still make videos about pipe blends. So I am experimenting to see what works, what doesn't. Thumbnails, tags, things that I actually say in the videos, titles for the videos, and I've managed to have quite a few of my videos stay monetized recently, except for the uh, Merde de Cheval, Merde de Cheval review that got demonetized. I'm not sure exactly why, because it had pretty much all the same tags and same kind of metadata meta meta as the first impressions video, and that didn't get demonetized. So I'm still sifting through things, trying to figure things out, because of, of course YouTube doesn't tell us what is wrong. They won't tell you what about your video made it get demonetized. There are a lot of people who think just anything to do with tea, with pipes, pipe smoking, cigars, all that stuff, that they're just trying to get that all off of their platform. Maybe that's true. And if it is, I think it's kind of fun if we can stick around. So most of you have been super supportive. I'm still experimenting. Um, of course, we're getting some comments from people who are very bent out of shape. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Um, they always seem to go into several, one of several categories. There's either you are selfish because you're trying to make money off of your YouTube videos. Okay. Um, or number two, you're a pussy. That's their words, quoting now, for censoring yourself. Don't you have any... Uh, pride in what you do? Don't you have any morals? Don't, or don't you stand for something? And to that, I, I, I just don't even know how to reply really because there's no moral stand in whether or not I say the T word on these videos. I haven't made some great proclamation that no, they will never force me to censor myself. I'm just trying to put videos on YouTube. I'm trying to please my viewers, I'm trying to satisfy my viewers, and I'm also trying to do things that I enjoy and things that I'm interested in. I'm also trying to make some money off of it because I've been doing this for years and I've been able to build this into something that gives me a little bit of extra income. And so for me to say, screw it, no, I will not, uh, I, I won't allow myself to be subverted. First of all, I'm not allowing myself to be subverted, but if I were just to be blatant about what we're doing here on YouTube, then all of my videos would be demonetized. I wouldn't make any extra money. And then the incentive for putting these videos out every week would go way, way down. I know a lot of you, or not a lot of you, I know a very few, a very few of you would like me to just do this week after week and never see any financial return for it because, I don't know, it's my duty or something, but I, think that most of you understand that when you're putting dozens of hours into something every week and something that you've built up and something that you've come to rely on as an extra means of income, that it makes sense for me to try to game the system a little bit and see what we can get away with. And that's what we're doing. We're seeing what we can get away with. So that out of the way, I was gonna read some of the comments, but actually quite a few of them were deleted um, after I responded to them. So I don't know if the viewers just thought better of it. Maybe they decided not to be a dick after initially being a dick. But anyway, we're fine. The channel's fine. Um, I'm still playing with the algorithm, seeing what we can get away with, what we can't get away with. But we're going to keep the content up. 
Speaking of content, so we've got our first impressions video that's gonna be posting this Wednesday. What I think we're gonna do with the Stuff and Things Read series is every Friday. So I'm continuing with The Stranger by Camus. The first video did well for you know a new episode in a new series, but the second episode did way less. It was like half the viewers of the first one. So I'm not sure if we're gonna go a lot longer with this. I'm at least gonna finish The Stranger. Um, but I think it's just a fun alternative and it's an extra video. I know it wasn't an extra video last week. It was the only video last week other than the Sunday stuff and things, but that's just because um, I had tried to do a bunch of videos in one weekend in preparation for my girlfriend coming back from her trip because I hadn't seen her in a long time and I wanted to spend time with her during that weekend. So anyway, this week we're gonna have our normal first impressions video on Wednesday, then we'll have the stranger reading on Friday. And I think we're gonna keep that up with our normal video Wednesday, our stranger video, or our stuff and things read vid re reads video every Friday. And we'll at least finish the stranger. If you guys want me to keep doing this series, let me know. Most importantly, watch the videos. So then I'll know that there's some interest out there um, because yeah, the viewership was cut in half basically for the second one, the second episode. And so I'm wondering, maybe this isn't going to be something that people are really into, but I will at least commit to doing it, finishing The Stranger, and then see where we can go from there. Um, on Stuff and Things Plays, I just finished recording the last episode in the Titanfall series. So for those of you who are interested in Titanfall 2, that will be ending soon. I can't remember when exactly that will post. It's either gonna be this week, I think it's next week, will be the last episode of Titanfall 2. And then we're continuing with Sekiro. And then I think I have a question in Ask Stuff and Things about what we're gonna be doing next. So I will save that for that. But for this following week and the week after, we still have Sekiro, Mario Maker 2, and Titanfall 2 just trading off one after the other. So that will continue for at least two more weeks. And then we're gonna get into something else. And then I got a package from somebody our good friend Eric Furman sent me a little note and a nice little package. He is someone who is a Patreon patron. He is in fact, uh, where is he? He's around here somewhere, isn't he? He's on Patreon. I can't remember if I read him out before, but he is a great guy. And he wrote this to me. He said, Bradley, I just wanted to share with you how much I appreciate your channel. Every Sunday evening, I look forward to lighting a pipe and, pipe and watching a pleasant Sunday smoke, which is now called Sunday Stuff and Things, TM. As a small token of my gratitude, I thought I would send you a few of my favorite teas. A couple weeks ago, I tweeted and asked if you would consider reviewing Shepherd's Pie. I understand you can't commit to review everything you get in the mail, but if you have time and you think it deserves it, consider reviewing it someday. I have heard many, considered she many consider Shepherd's Pie as a replacement for Frogmorton. I wouldn't know. Frogmorton was discontinued before I started smoking a pipe. These teas are from the Country Squire, thecountrysquireonline.com. They are a small brick and mortar. I have never been there in person, but I'd like to patronize smaller tea shops when I can, and they have a nice website and also produce some good YouTube content as well. I've seen some of that. Country Squire, isn't there a Country Squire radio or something as well? In addition to Shepherd's Pie, I also included Cornishman, which is a wonderful English that serves as a great all day smoke. I also included Cowboy Coffee. This tobacco, this tea, careful. Smells so good, it's hard to believe it's not an aromatic. It's a fun blend. Again, thanks so much for your channel. I love your tea reviews, pipe discussions, how-tos, and just general discussions about life. I know you typically prefer vapors, but I hope these are a nice addition to your cellar. P.S. I have never been able to get the knack of retrohaling. Ah, uh, yes. So, Eric, um, could you do a bit of how-to on the next Sunday Smoke? Um, you had that question in, I think, the last Sunday Smoke, but I had two questions from you, and then I think I read them both but only answered one, which happens to me a lot. Um, so I will definitely answer that when we get to Ask Stuff and Things this week. So thank you very much, Eric. That was very generous of you. And we have these three blends here. Shepherd's Pie, we have Cornishman, and we have Cowboy's Coffee. And so I'm looking forward, or Cowboy Coffee. I'm looking forward to trying these babies out. They smell pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there a description on these? Let's see. Do, 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 do. It says for discriminating pipe. It's, and so, 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 Mississippi, huh? Is that where it is? Mississippi? Yeah, Jackson, Mississippi. Cool. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to trying these out. You will see these probably in some subsequent videos, at least Shepherd's Pie. I will do a first impressions video and a review of. I can promise you that, Eric. 
So gang, I think that's it. I think we need to get to ask Stefan things now. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like me to answer it on the pleasant Sunday smoke, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask Stefan things and I will do my best to answer it on the show. Also, if you are a Patreon patron, you can write to me there, leave a comment, leave a uh, message for me and I will answer your question if you wish me to on the Sunday stuff and things as well. But we will start with Twitter from Dreams of Briar at Dreams of Briar. They say, Hey Bradley, thank you for providing a space where we can all learn about tea pipes, pipe tea, and pipe culture. With that being said, I have a question. What are some good budget-friendly pipes and or pipe companies? Love from Springfield, uh, what does that say? Springfield, Missouri? It's Missouri, right? Springfield, Missouri? Oh, that's embarrassing. Um, budget-friendly pipes and or pipe companies. Mm, well, we had the Briarworks pipe that we featured on this channel. That was a very decent pipe for a very decent price. So you could check those out. You could look at my video for that. There are companies like Peterson and Savinelli, some of those, the larger companies that are sort of factory pipes that do make budget lines with varying levels of quality. You don't always know what you're gonna get. Sometimes it's a crapshoot, but sometimes you can find something that's really decent. Um, I've heard that Nording makes some really decent lower end pipes. Um, I've never actually had a Nording before, but those are some places where you could check. You could start there, try those out. And then if anyone else in the comments below has some good experiences with cheaper pipes, you could also try, you know, a Meerschaum as well, or not a Meerschaum, uh, uh, Missouri Meerschaum corn cob pipe. Um, and if anyone else has any other companies that they would like to shout out, do it in the comments. Next, we have Eric Furman. All right, Eric, uh, I will finally answer your question. He says, thanks for almost getting to it last Sunday. Thought I would try again. I've never been able to get the knack of retrohaling. Could you do a bit of a how-to? So retrohaling is sort of a mis misnomer because you're not actually inhaling anything. What you're doing is you're allowing the smoke to come into your mouth and then you're drawing it through your nose. Right, let me show you. So you have your pipe lit. You puff a little bit on your pipe, you have the smoke in your mouth, and you basically just let it out through your nose. I don't know how to describe it. You, you don't wanna do it. I know some people who smoke the old cigarettes, they will let a little out of their mouth and then they suck it in through their nose, but that way you are going to inhale so when you're doing it with a pipe, you don't want to inhale. So what I do is I just let a little in and it's like a back of your tongue sort of movement. Let me try this again. All right. It's just a little bit back of the tongue. You're pushing it through your sinuses and out. You're not inhaling it. You're just pushing it out. And it's hard to describe the movement that you're making, like the musculature in your throat and in your nose and everything, but um, it's a really interesting way to taste more of the blend because so the, your sense of smell is very inexorably linked to your sense of taste. And especially with Perique and other sort of spicy flavors, you're really gonna get more out of it if you let it get into your nose a little bit. It's just like that. You're just, you're just filling your mouth and then kind of pushing from the back of your throat with your tongue and a little bit of an exhale through your nose. I don't know if I can describe it any better. Hopefully that helps. Maybe some people in the comments have a better way of describing that. Next, we have a question from Tyler at Tyler Brewbaker 20 at SAT Bradley. He says, <clears throat> Hey Bradley, I hope all is well. I recently purchased a corn cob pipe, filled it with tea, lit it, and he actually put tea in quotations, and puff like a freight train. And we know how that song and dance goes. Do you think you could do a video on puffing cadence? Um, I did something on the breath smoking technique once, I think, on a Sunday smoke. And then I don't know if I have a guide to where I talk about cadence specifically, but you sort of have to find an equilibrium when you're puffing on your pipe where you can keep it lit. I did one whole video, I think, where I just smoked an entire bowl without having to relight it. 
not as a way of showing off, but just showing that it's possible that if you get your, the cadence right, a good pipe um, and a blend that has the proper moisture content, you can just sort of sip at it for an hour and go through the entire bowl without having to relight it. Um, when I'm talking to you, my cadence probably isn't very good because I'm trying to get it relit and get it going again. But when I'm just sitting by myself, I don't know if you can really see that, but it's just sipping. It is sort of a circular breathing technique where you're not inhaling, but you're just sipping every once in a while. You're letting the smoke come out. You're taking some more in, letting it come out slowly, not over puffing, not getting it too hot. It's something that just comes naturally after a while. As long as your pipe isn't getting too hot, as long as it's not starting to taste harsh, um, you're probably doing it okay. But don't worry too much about it. it, it there isn't really like a correct way of doing it. There's just a way that works, I guess. Next, we have a question from Janko Percussion. But before we do that, I'm going to pause and I'm going to stop the video so we don't have a weird edit. Hold on. All right, I think we're back. For some reason, I, I can only record for 22 minutes and 53 seconds before it cuts off and then starts another file. So anyway, Janko Percussion, did I say precision before? At Janko Percussion, he says, or she says, Janko, not sure. What games are coming next on your gaming channel? Also, I would love to see the review of Savinelli English Mixture. Love your content. Uh, I've done some Savinelli stuff, but we might get back to some more of that. Um, what we are going to be playing next on Stuff and Things Plays, we are going to be continuing Sekiro. Titanfall is finishing soon. Mario Maker 2 will probably be interspersed throughout because I'm enjoying playing that game so much. But I think for another long play series, I think I'm going to jump back into Minecraft. We might have to resurrect the Bradcraft Show, which has existed on like other YouTube channels years and years ago. Um, and I had a bit on this channel, I think. I don't think I've ever put Bradcraft on Stuff and Things Plays yet. I'm not sure, but we're gonna jump back into Minecraft. I haven't played it for a very long time. I think the last update I played was 1.6 or 1.8, and now they're at 1.14 or something like that. But it's getting super popular again on YouTube, and I've kind of been itching to play it again, and I wanna see what all new stuff has been included with it. So I think we're going to get back into Minecraft, and that is a fun game to play. And then, of course, as new games come out, things that catch my eye uh, will jump on those as well. I'm trying to think of anything this fall that's supposed to be coming. I'm not sure. There might be some PS4 exclusives that I might want to jump into, um, but we'll see. But definitely Minecraft is probably the one coming up next. And for our last question, this is from Joshua Martin at Joshu88. Joshu says... Now that Dunhill T is coming back, will it be called Dunhill at all? Just the blend names. Super pumped that these will in some form be available. STG is doing the right thing. Will companies like McClelland do the same? Um, we can pretty much guarantee that it's not going to be called Dunhill. Dunhill does not want anything to do with tea anymore. They're a lifestyle brand now. Um, so they're divesting themselves of all tea related things. So it will be branded after a brand that STG owns. A lot of people were assuming maybe Orlick, maybe Peterson. We're not sure, but it will be under one of those or one of many that they own or have a controlling interest in. And, um, but the blend names, as far as we know, are going to be the same. That's what we have been able to determine so far. I still haven't heard back from STG. I don't know that I ever will. I've written them a couple emails, but they don't seem to be in too much of a hurry to get back to me. Uh, but we'll see. If they let me know anything straight from the horse's mouth, I will uh, pass it on to you as well. And then McClellan, I don't think so. They're not the same. It's They were a company, they blended, they did their own blends. Um, I guess you could almost say they were a mom and pop organization, even though they had so many blends out at one time. But it's not like 
it, it's different when there is a giant manufacturer like STG or a giant distributor like STG who was already producing these blends. They already had the recipes. Um, they didn't have the rights to them, but they were already making them. And then it, it makes sense for them to just buy the recipes and re-release them. With McClelland, I don't know that that would really make sense because they were the ones producing their blends. If they were to sell those recipes to someone else, would they be the same blends? Um, it would be the same issue we had with some of those match blends that were trying to replicate the Dunhill blends after they got taken off the market. I don't know. I just don't really see McClellan coming back in any shape or form um, other than the actual original company uh, starting up again, and I don't think that's going to happen either. So, gang, I think that's it for Ask Stuff and Things. I think that's it for this Sunday Stuff and Things. But before we close, we have to get to the best part of the show every week. We like to thank our Patreon supporters, those who support the channels at $25 and up. People like Glenn. Thank you so much, Glenn. People like Kevin Moore. Kevin, we appreciate it. People like Derek. Derek is a $25 and up supporter. Also, Cody Striegler. Thank you very much, Cody, for being a supporter on Patreon. Nathaniel Hills is also a $25 supporter. Kirk Crompton, private investigator. C.W. Piperman, thank you, C.W. Also, Garrett. Garrett is a $25 supporter. Adam Loveless, we're gonna be getting a little bit extra from Adam here pretty soon. There's a package in the mail, supposedly, that I'm quite looking forward to. Thank you very much, Adam. You've been very generous. Ryan McFadden is one of our newest supporters. Corbin Borbin, thank you very much for being a $25 patron. MD of the North, thank you so much for being a supporter on Patreon. Robert Venerous is our latest $25 supporter. And now I would like to thank the Maniacs, the people who support the channels at $100 a month. People like our good friend, Peter Straub. Thank you very much, Peter, for being a $100 Maniac tier supporter. We're really enjoying reading your book and I'm gonna continue as long as you say that it's okay for me to continue. And also, Bob McGee. Thank you, Bob. You're one of the good ones. And thank you, gang, for watching this Sunday stuff and things. But that's all we have time for this week. Tune in next time. Make sure to watch all the stuff that's coming. Jermaine's Royal Jersey Perique Mixture this Wednesday. Camus The Stranger Chapter 3 this Friday. More videos on Stuff and Things Plays. More of everything on every channel. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been good for a million and a Plays. Not Stuff and Things Plays. Stuff and Things. On a pleasant Sunday, Stuff and Things. It's been a long day. I'll see you later. Coffee, 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 coffee.